Hi guys, welcome back to the Mushroom Market and welcome into my kitchen today. So in today's video I'm going to be experimenting a little bit with some vegetable dyes and botanical dyes. Now I have done some of these dyes before. Um, I have done onion skin, I have done purple cabbage and I have done beets. So I'm going to be doing um, those again on camera for you. Um, what else I've got here is some grapes. So I'm going to be trying... Um, to make sort of a purple dye out of these grapes and like I said to you guys I'm going to experiment with these sort of <laughs> infused packets that I have here um, sprinkling those on paper I did get a little bit impatient and try this out uh, yesterday and they did work so we'll do those on camera today I've got a few other things that I want to experiment with I've got a, a bowl full of marigolds here um, like I said, I've been growing a lot of marigolds um, just for the bees in my garden and they've just taken off so I've got an abundance of marigolds and what I've been doing is deadheading a lot of my marigolds so I do have um, some dried marigolds and I know that it can sort of work with fresh or dried so I brought both of those out today. And what else do I have? I've got a few sort of um, tea packets that I want to experiment with. Now I am a huge collector of tea and I often grab it when it's on sale. So I've got a few things here. I've got a big bag of these sort of leaves here. I do believe it's an orange mix. I'm not entirely sure because I did get this overseas. Um, I do have some other tea bags such as this one which I didn't particularly like so it's just been sitting there. Um, I'm not too sure I think. Well, I'm hoping, yeah, it's rose hips, hibiscus, blackberry, and things like that. And I know that a lot of those things do um, produce quite a nice dye. So I'm going to actually tear into these tea bags because I don't actually like the, um, the taste of this. So we may as well use that one up. And what else do I have? I've got this one here, which is chamomile and lemon. I might sprinkle some of that. Um... Yeah, just a few bits and pieces. So in order of what I'm going to do things today is I'm going to get my marigolds and I'm going to pop them in some hot water in a jar and I'm going to sort of leave them to soak for a wee while and then I'm going to get my vegetables and things on the stove. Now this absolutely is not um, all that you can die with. There is a huge amount of vegetables, fruits and botanical dyes. Um, there was another botanical dye I wanted to do today but I wasn't able to find it and that was um, Bougainvillea and I really wanted to try Bougainvillea out but yeah like I said I couldn't find it. So I've got a piece of paper here and it's got a list of different vegetables and fruit dyes. You can obviously do all the sort of Berries like blueberry, raspberry, blackberries, um, elderberry, mulberries. The list is just sort of, this is not even limited to um, what you can make a dye out of. This is just some of the, th the things I've listed. So I've just sort of written them down there for you. There's some others, so it's like turmeric, walnut hulls, acorns, willow bark. Over here there's some botanical dyes. So if you want you can list some of those down yourself. Uh, marigolds are the ones I'm going to try today. There's a lot. Indigo is a really makes a beautiful blue dye. I've heard lavender. I'm not too sure about lavender. I think that might be hit and miss but I'll give that a go because I do have lavender in my garden. It's just not in bloom at the moment. Um, dahlias. Just there's so so many so this list is definitely yeah just a few but you can sort of read there if you've got some of those flowers and things around your house then you can definitely give those a go. So I'll pop that down now and we'll get started. I'll sort of move some things out the way. And I hope the lighting is okay in here today for you. So let me just sort of move some of my grapes and things a little bit away. Now I've just boiled my jug so the first thing I'm going to get started on Alright you guys, so I do apologise about the uh, stopping of the video quite abruptly. I did knock something over. So I decided to change angles here for you guys. So you can see what I'm doing here. I've just got this large 
jar that I'm going to sit here and I'm going to just, I think I'm going to twist off just the green part of the marigolds and I'm just going to pop them into this jar here like so. So these are all different colours of marigolds. I'm not sure what um, colour this is going to turn out because they are different colours but I'm thinking maybe a yellowish colour. Alright you guys, so I've just finished um, taking all these marigold leaves off. It took me quite a while and they smell absolutely beautiful in here. I filled up quite a lot of this jar actually. So I'm going to just add the boiling water into this now and then I'm going to let this sit uh, for several hours. Now I think I did read that it's best to let them sit in hot water overnight and then maybe boil them. Um, but I'm just going to see what happens. So it's sort of an experiment here today. I'm just gonna fill this right up to the top. And then I'll probably mix it around a little bit, I think. You can already see a little bit of a yellow coloration but bear with me one second I'm just going to grab a wooden spoon just to stir this around in the water. Alright you guys so I've just sort of stirred that around and now I'm just going to pop that on top and I'm going to leave this for several hours just to sit and let the dyed sort of leach out. Now the other thing is I'm not, I don't think I'm going to use sort of a vinegar or anything in this. Um, I usually use a vinegar with my vegetable dye, but yeah, I think I'll just see how this one goes with hot water. I'm just going to pop it on this wooden board and then just let it sit and we'll move on to a few other sort of experimental dyes. So bear with me and I'll be back with you and I'll set up um, the next dye that we're going to do. Alright guys, so I'm back now and I'm going to move on to the next sort of experimental uh, dye and I'm going to be using these infuse packets here. So this one is blueberry, apple and black currant. I also have watermelon, strawberry and mint and then I have some of these peach and passion fruit. This one is lemon, orange and ginger. I am also going to be sprinkling on some of these tea bags. I'm just sort of going to sprinkle them over the top of the paper, just using a mix of things. So I've got these sort of uh, aluminum or alfoil trays that I just picked up uh, very cheaply in the supermarket. And I'm just going to grab a couple here. So what I might do is I might stack the pages up on one another. So I've got a few different lots of paper here. I've got just plain copy paper, which is 80 GSM. Um, and then I've got some onion skin dyed paper and beet dyed paper that I have already done before. And I thought maybe it would be nice to sprinkle it over some already sort of stained paper. You could do this with uh, tea dyed paper and things like that. So I'm going to grab, hopefully it sits in okay. I'm going to grab this onion skin paper here and then I will grab a big dyed paper and pop that in there and I'm going to start I think with this one here the blueberry apple and black currant and we'll sprinkle some of that over 
and also some peach and passion fruit. I'm gonna grab one of those. Let me just grab some scissors here. I'm just gonna snip the uh, wee tea bag off. And I'm just going to sprinkle this all over the paper. I'm not looking to create um, a dye as such. I, I kind of want to create sort of a pattern um, of colour. So just not necessarily just sinking this in water. I'm just going to spray with this spray bottle, this is not cleaning product, I'm just reusing this and this has got warm warm water in it and when I tried this I did use cold water but this time I decided I'm just going to try um, warm water so let's snip this one open which is the peach and passion fruit and these smell absolutely beautiful so I'm going to sprinkle, sprinkle it all over here doesn't need to be even, it can just be anywhere. Then I think I might grab some of this. Now, what is this? It's in another language, so I, I'm really, I'm unsure. But this is the packet and it's been sitting in my cupboard for a long time. Um, I don't know what it is, but we'll see. We'll see if it does anything. So I'm going to just sprinkle some of those on here. There's that, and we've got some of these exotic fruits. Um, the one that I didn't like, this is in the tea bag. I'm going to snip this off and pour some of that over. I'm going to layer this up too, so I'm going to put another sheet of paper on top. Now, they're not lying the straightest, which it's kind of a little bit frustrating because I know that when I go to spray the liquid it's going to pull up so I'm just thinking if there's anything else I can use which there really isn't um, but what I could do is just sort of halve the paper but well yeah we'll just see we'll see how we go guys let me just finish sprinkling this over and what else can we put in let me have a look and see what else i've brought over um we've done that one we've done the tea we've got the infusions this one is chamomile with lemon honey i don't know that's really going to do much we'll start spraying anyway you guys so yeah once again this is just warm water in this reusable spray bottle here uh, this, I think it was yeah, bath and shower clean. So let's see how we go. I'll bring you, I'll bring you guys down a little bit so you can maybe see a little bit better. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna start spraying. I actually should have uh, pre-wet this. That was a mistake I made because I um, originally planned to do that and I forgot. As you spray this, the smell is just absolutely beautiful. It's actually pushing that down too, which is good. What I might do is I might add some more um, infuse to this. And you can see the color already running out of these um, packets. I'm going to grab, maybe we'll grab, hmm, yeah, we'll grab a few more packets and throw them on. And, yeah, we'll see how that goes. 
just wet it a little bit more. I might try and spread this out a little bit. What I'm also going to do is lay some regular copy paper over the top of these. And I also have some tags, so you could put some tags in there maybe. Hmm. We'll see how we go. Maybe we'll do another layer. Just going to pop that in there and it will get wet, so I will spray it. I'm going to do another layer of, um, just spray this, make it a little bit wet. So that maybe some of those um, dyes can come through from the bottom there. So I don't want to completely submerge this with water, but I want to make it wet enough that it's the dye is sort of running. So I'm going to throw some different things on here. I think throw some chamomile on. I don't know that this will particularly do much this one but we will see. I'm going to actually leave these out in the sun as well. So that they sort of get quite warm with the, sort of like a solar dye, if you know what I mean. So the sun is going to heat it up a little bit as well. And it's also going to dry it out. So I'm going to leave those outside all day, excuse me, all day and all night. And um, we'll come back tomorrow and see what the sort of result is. I'm going to throw this one on here. And going to use some more of these tea bags here because like I said I don't drink these ones I'll throw that one all on there and I'll grab another one so it's a bit of a experimental play in my kitchen here today <laughs> some um, tags over the top of this as well so what else do we have here grab another one of my infuse yeah and like I said you can get these on special so that's sort of the only time I buy them um, but I did get a bunch of free samples as well and that one there and one more of the peach and passion fruit on here and then I think we'll just wet this one. Okay. So I might actually use some of these tags and just throw them on as well. Um, not sure if it's really gonna. Maybe we'll just sort of soak those up. Like so. And then I've got these ones as well. I'm gonna pop those over here. just give a little subtle pattern on the um, tags there which might be quite nice I've never done this before so we'll see how it turns out and let's add what do we have I've got some dried marigolds which I haven't actually used I don't know if these will do anything but let's add some 
of these dried marigolds onto the tags as well. You might need a little bit of um, warm water on these ones, but I'll grab my kettle and just sort of pour it over a little bit, I think. do with these now is I'm going to go and put them right out in the sun and they're just going to sit there all day and hopefully they'll make some imprints. Um, it's going to be a little bit different because I'm not steaming them so it's definitely going to be very experimental. <laughs> um, maybe I should add a little bit more of these infusions to the tags and then we'll We'll call it a day on these ones and we'll move on to our vegetable dye. Okay. I think that's definitely enough. <laughs> We've got a lot going on here. Okay. Alright you guys, these ones are going to go sit outside to sort of soak in the colours and absorb and then I will bring these back in tomorrow when they're sort of dried up or I might move them off later on tonight to dry out and then we'll come back tomorrow and see the result of these. So yesterday I was out for a walk and I did pick up some flowers. Now I am completely unsure what type of flowers these are. So I don't know if they're going to produce a dye, but I just thought I would give it a go while I'm sort of doing this today. I absolutely do not know if this is going to create a dye, so completely experimental. I've just thrown random ones in here too. So I'm going to just sort of pop these into this jar here. Um, please excuse the noise, you guys. I do have a lot of building going on around me at the moment. Um, I've got all sorts of leaves, pink and reds here. I do have some leaves, I think, too, but I'm not going to pop those in. I'm just going to sift through these and just put all of these sort of pinky ready leaves in. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to put some boiling water. There's not much in here. Um, I'd be surprised if it did leak out a dye, but I'm just going to fill it up. Leave it to soak. And I'm not, I'm not very optimistic on this one. Just because I don't have a huge amount of petals in there. I don't know what they are, so. And I can't even see sort of any pinks or anything leaching out, but we'll pop that one to the side and I'll let you guys know if it's a bust or not. And we'll move on to our vegetable dyes now. So what I think I'll start with is obviously I've got yellow onion skins here. Now you can do um, red onion skins as well. I have been saving this lot up for well over a month. Every time we have a meal, I've just got a little bowl that I pop them into so this is how much I've gathered up so I'm going to grab a pot now and all of the pots that I used I grabbed from secondhand stores and they're primarily just for um they're not for my food cooking they're just for my dyeing and whatever else I want to sort of experiment with 
I don't use them um, for my regular sort of food. So I'm just going to grab a pot for this now. I'm just sort of seeing which one will be best. So these ones are very, very, sorry you guys, <laughs> very old pots. Now I'm just going to put all of these yellow onion skins in here. So that's probably filled this one up about a quarter of the way. I'm going to top this up with water and then I'm going to put some white vinegar in here. So I'm probably going to put about um, probably around a half a cup, quarter of a cup or a half a cup of uh, white vinegar. It depends how much sort of uh, how big your pot is. So I'm going to fill this up with water and I will be back. All right. So this. Um, pot has just been sort of filled right up and I'm just going to add in my white vinegar just around about that much and I'm going to pop that on the stove and I'm going to let it simmer for several hours just until I can sort of see you can sort of tell when the color goes out of your vegetables so I'll just keep an eye on it but it will be at least a few hours and um, also one thing to note is I will get a lot less than this that will sort of reduce down. So I'm just going to pop this over onto my stove now. And I'm going to move on to the next vegetable. I've got another really old pot here. Now the next vegetable I think I'm going to experiment with is these grapes. Now these are pretty cheap at the moment and I have never tried grapes before so I think I'm just going to throw them in whole take them straight off the um, the stems here Okay, so same thing. I'm just going to top this up with water and I'm going to add some vinegar into this and we'll see if we can make a purple dye from this. I'm not sure what color these will come out. These are black grapes, so who knows? And maybe they'll come out of gray. I'm not sure. So um, we'll go and fill this one up now. All right, you guys, so same thing here. Just fill it up with water. I'm going to pop some vinegar in. And I will just pop this over on my stove ready to go. Now the other thing is I don't have um, enough pots. So I only have these three old ones that I use. And I'm doing four different vegetables. So I'm going to have to wait for one of them to finish before I can move on. So the next one I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out my old chopping board and I'm going to chop up this red or purple cabbage I don't know I think it's red cabbage so I'm just going to chop this up here pop it straight into my pan um, and do the same thing I'm going to fill this up with water and vinegar and then they're all going to go on the stove for the next few hours and I'll come back when the dyes are all finished and we can have a look at them and start to sort of paper dye. Now I don't know whether this video is going to be 
and one part or two parts. It might have to be in two parts. I'm just I'm not entirely sure, actually, you guys. So. Alright, so I finished with the purple cabbage or the red cabbage here. I'm just going to pop some vinegar in. This is a much larger pot, so I might put a little bit more in. And then I'm going to put these on the stove for several hours. And let them simmer. Probably two to three hours, something like that. And then when I come back, I'm going to do the sort of the beets here and do another round of those in a pot and then I will finish up the video with I think just the when the dyes are all done and then we might come back in part two and then we'll do um, some dyeing of the papers then but I will talk to you guys very soon it'll be one second for you guys it'll be a couple hours for me so I will see you back here um, all right you guys so I thought I would update you sort of uh, midway through the process and I've got my three pots here um, over here I've got the grapes and probably what I should have done is cut the grapes up more but I went in with a um, masher like a potato masher and I sort of just mashed them with this so I don't know you guys probably can't see very well because it's steaming quite a bit but there's quite a nice purple dye in there so just pop that massively oversized lid pack on here um, over here we have got the onion skins so they are boiling away probably a little bit too much even though it is down low and here we've got the uh, purple or red cabbage dye in here so these will be due to come off the stove probably Oh, probably within the next hour because I need to get my beets on and I'm losing light because it's getting dark now because it is um, coming, well it's autumn now so it's getting quite dark early on. And then over here I just wanted to show you guys, um, this is the marigold steeping. So if you can see there, it's, it's a really nice colour. I'm not entirely sure what colour it will turn out to be, maybe... A yellowy orange but so far it's looking really really good just you can see in there and then over here is the little jar I just made the little experimental jar where I just popped the flowers in and you can see all the colors already come out of those petals and I'm thinking it's just a very 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 light pink if that I'm not sure if it's gonna die um, but I will strain that out and yeah that's just a little update um, over on my stove and then I'm gonna pop outside and show you guys um, the infused sort of paper that I've got out there okay guys so outside I've got these sort of infused or sort of experimental papers that I was doing inside and I had to sort of um, take them apart because I did put too much water and the water was sort of pooling um, and I don't really want that so I've just got these ones here in the tin foil you can see it's maybe not picking it up so well on camera and then over here I've just got a, a lid that I was using and I've got these ones drying out here so I'm gonna leave these ones um, overnight and we'll check on them in the morning you can see there there's the dye hasn't got to that so that's completely white there and some markings and things like that I mean maybe I don't know how these tags are gonna go but we'll see you can see some lovely sort of blue dye there but yeah that's how these ones are going so far 
and I'll bring you back inside and we'll carry on with our vegetable dye. Hi you guys, so I'm back now and I'm going to be draining my first lot of dye. So this dye here is a, uh, well it's made from grapes and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just transfer it to these bowls um, so that all the skins and stuff will stay like drained in this part. And then I'm going to pop these dyes in the fridge for a little while before I transfer them into these bottles here, which is what I'll keep them in. Um, purely because I don't want to put boiling hot water into these glass bottles. I don't trust that they won't crack or break, so I want to cool this dye down a little bit till it's, you know, warm is okay. I just didn't want it boiling hot. So I'll go ahead now and I'm going to, um, this is very, very, very hot, so I'm just going to... Um, Use some oven mitts here and wish me luck, you guys. I'm going to transfer it into two bowls here. So I'll slowly do it because I don't really want to burn myself. And sorry if you guys get uh, sort of fogged out by the smoke there. I'm just going to do this a little bit at a time. So that's some of it done now. I'm going to Drain this a little bit. I actually might grab, hang on one second you guys, I'm just going to grab my masher to try and um, sorry guys, I'm just going to grab my masher to try and uh, push some of the liquid out of this and I did use this masher to sort of um, just before when I wanted to um, mash the grapes up while they were dying so just to get as much of the liquid out as possible I'm just gonna do this Okay, so I think that'll be enough now. I'm just going to get rid of this here. And as you can see, it's it's filled this whole bowl up here. And I'm hoping that it's going to be quite a... Let's see if I can show you guys. But I'm hoping it's going to be quite a nice purple. It does look purplish, sort of pinkish. So if you guys can see there under my <laughs> tablespoon, that's what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this bowl in the fridge just to cool down for a little bit and I'm going to try and strain the rest out into this bowl and I'll pop these both in the fridge and then we'll move on to um, bottle, bottling it up and then straining the rest of the vegetables out. Okay, so while I've got the grape juice cooling down in the fridge, I thought I would just get a head start on these um, beets here. And I mean, I don't think I'm going to take the skin off. I might just give them a wee, a wee wash. Um, just to sort of get a bit of, you know, if there's any dirt or anything on them, just to get that off. Um, and I don't know if I'll use some of the stalks, I mean they're quite red, so I might throw some of these stalks in as well. So I'm just going to go ahead now and just chop these up, I'll slice them up and then I'm going to pop them in this pot.
Okay, you guys, so that's all chopped up now, and I'm just gonna do the same. I'm just gonna throw a bit of vinegar in. About a half a cup, and I'm gonna pop this on for the next couple of hours, and I'll be sort of rotating, I'll be back and forth. I'm gonna be popping this one on, pulling one out the fridge, bottling that up, pulling the rest off the stove, and straining them, putting them back on back in the fridge, that kind of thing. So just repeating the process. So I'm going to strain this grape juice now and it's still a little warm but it's it's mostly cooled down quite a bit and I'm going to pop them into these um, glass bottles that I have just using a funnel so I might just move that one there um, and if you're doing this I recommend doing it on something like a sheet of something not directly on your bench because I have had the mistake of staining my bench so yeah I just sort of I'm using this cutting board here but we'll just pour this slowly into the bottle here and then I'll show you the color of it oh overflowing a wee bit I can fill it up just a little bit more, maybe. So, just pop this one on here. And this here is the grape juice. So that one little, um, one little bowl there has filled up an entire one liter um, glass bottle. So I will keep filling these ones up. I did buy quite a few um, of these because I like to keep them um, for my dyes. So just keep filling this one up. And I might actually just pour some of this large one into here because it will be easier to pour into this funnel here and I'm sorry if the lighting's bad because we do have some rain coming so it's getting very very overcast here at the moment There's two litres of our purple grape dye. I've got another bottle here. So the amount of grapes that I got was just over a kilo's worth. I think it was probably around 1.2 kilos worth of grapes. And that has yielded about two and three quarters of a litre well, bottles so worth of dye so we're going to be using this dye tomorrow to dye our papers but for now they're going to stay overnight in these bottles and I'm going to move on to um, pouring out the other dye that I have the uh, what was it the cabbage dye <laughs> sorry you guys it's getting very very late in the afternoon here I think what I'll do as well is I will um, label these because sometimes they do look very very similar in tone so I might grab something just to label this grape juice so I know what um, dye I'm using when I'm dyeing my paper but we'll move on now and I will grab the cabbage dye
All right, you guys, um, so for this cabbage dye, I have gotten approximately one, two, three, four, five and a half liters of dye. Um, so that is a really, really, really good value for money. Um, just label them, like I said, and um, put them aside and then you can dye whenever you want. So now I've actually run out of all of these bottles. I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna put my onion dye in, but um, I'll think of something and yeah, I'll get back to you when we're ready to do our onion dye. Okay, so I've got some onion dye here and I've had to be a little bit resourceful because I did run out of my bottles that I had, so I went out to my recycle and I've rinsed out some of these juice containers that I have and I'm just going to use those I don't want to go out and buy more of those glass bottles so you sort of just have to use what you've got really so I'm going to put the <laughs> onion onion dye in here and these are two liter bottles so we'll see how much we get into here and it's a lovely yellow color if you can see it going into the funnel there. The only thing is, I don't want to go putting this back in the fridge because then my kids might think it's juice. And um, <laughs> we don't want them drinking onion juice. Okay, so all of the onion, if you can see the coloration, you might not be able to because the lighting is pretty awful here, but that is another, um, nearly another two litre bottle all filled up. So close to four litres of onion dye here. So I'm gonna pop that one aside and then we're just gonna be waiting on the beets to be done. Um, they'll be done probably within the next hour, hour and a half. Um, it's getting quite dark here now, so I might just, uh, finish up the video here and then I'll I'll play some music and just um, you know just uh, filter the the beet dye but I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm sorry if it's a little bit all over the place because for you guys the video might be an hour long but for me it's been four or five hours so I start to get a little bit tired after that time so I do apologize if I'm making mistakes left right and center I'm spilling things I'm a bit of a mess but you know that's just how it how it is with me um, so yeah I'll finish up the video with the beet dye uh, when it's done and I'm going to be back in part two and I'm going to be dyeing some paper um, with all of the dyes so that we can have a look at the colors that they turn out and one thing that I do want to know I probably should mention it tomorrow but um, when I'm going to be doing the paper you'll notice that the first dye and say the last dye will be completely different tones um, the first dye you're going to get a darker tone and the last dye will be much lighter so yeah and I'm also going to do I think some embossing on my paper and things like that so that'll be out in part two but if you have any questions, um, just leave them down below in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, yeah, like I said, there's a lot more things that you can die with. And um, I did have the piece of paper there with me. So you can um, sort of just have a look, pause the video and have a look at what I've written. But once again, that's not um, all of it. Uh, you can find plenty, plenty other things that you can dye with. Vegetables that you've got growing in your backyard, you know. If you're um, making meals and having onions in it, do what I did. Save the onion peels, um, carrot peels, things like that. Just uh, save your avocado skins, your avocado pits. 
pips, pips. Um, I think that you can you can save a lot of different kitchen scraps to dye paper and fabric with and fabric is kind of a whole other video really and it's something that I don't have a whole heap of experience in but there's a lot of different things you can do with fabric um, natural if you use natu naturally sort of made fabrics such as silk and cottons and linens and things like that that are natural uh, natural materials they will um, absorb dyes and things like that a lot better another thing is you can add mordants to change the color like iron mordants and alum and things like that that will alter the colors of your dye so that's a whole other video but I really don't have a, a huge amount of experience to be um, making a video on fabric dyeing for you guys right now but yeah once again I hope you enjoyed this video I hope that it's um, given you some inspiration to try some vegetable and botanical dyeing um, you, you guys in other countries probably have an abundance of beautiful flowers that you can use I don't have a whole heap here I just have the marigolds like I said I did want to try the um, uh, bougainvillea because that's one I haven't tried yet and I know that that does make a nice dye I think you just leave it in water just like with the marigolds so yeah I will wrap it up now and I will be back tomorrow or the next day depending on when this video comes out and I hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday or Monday wherever you are in the world um, take care guys and I'll speak to you soon bye guys